Hi everyone, it's me Francesca and this week I am going to be setting up a little reading nook and plant nook in my apartment. Since I was a kid I always imagined having like this cozy space to curl up and read and unfortunately as I've gotten older I kind of read a little less and just as I'm staying home so much now after the pandemic, I just think it would be nice to finally make that space a reality. And as I've gotten so into plants and plant care over the last uh, few years, I thought why not incorporate plants into that? So I'm going to be making a little IKEA greenhouse and putting in some comfy chairs, a bookcase, and trying to make a cozy spot in my home. So this is going to be a project that takes a few days because I am waiting for items to come in at Ikea. So I'll try and put the timestamps down below for different parts of the video if you're only interested in how I build or weather strip the greenhouse or anything. But I am going to get started right now by cleaning out the corner and moving over some books. So thanks for joining me and Let's get started.
Okay, so day one is complete of uh, setting up my little corner here. My bookshelf is in. Uh, I have some grow lights that I'm also gonna need to put in. Uh, my beautiful new chair, which I picked up from Ikea, which I love. I still need to get the proper cushion to go on it, but one step at a time. Uh, so this is it for now, but I will check back in when I have my uh, greenhouse cabinet, which is going to be the Ikea Bagabo, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect them together and weather strip them. So I will see you right now. I did intend this to only be a couple days later, but it took a while for the uh, Bagabo greenhouse cabinets to come in at Ikea, so this is actually like two or three weeks later. But here we are. Right now I'm putting the cabinets together, but only putting in sides on two of the three cabinets because when I put all of them together I'm only going to need sides uh, going to need them to be enclosed on each end. You can see they look sort of opaque. The Bagabo does have open sides but I laminated them to keep the humidity in. If you're looking for a cheap way to enclose them I really recommend laminating just both sides of the mesh. It's really easy to do and it is definitely good at keeping that moisture and that humidity in. Now that I have the three greenhouses put together, I connected them using foam double-sided tape, which I will weather strip. Uh, I am grabbing my first type of weather stripping, uh, and this is V-shaped weather stripping that you can find at pretty much any hardware store. It's very basic, and I'm using it to reinforce or to cover the gaps uh, in the seams between the doors and the cabinets. So first you'll see that I've taken away the cabinet doors, and then I'm un uh, unrolling the weather stripping and sticking it to the side with the point of the V facing outwards so that it will open with the door. This is really easy to apply. I think that almost anybody can do this themselves. Um, watch a couple videos on weather stripping if you're uncertain, but I found it really easy and something I could just play around with. I will recommend getting more than you think that you, than you need because you go through it really fast, very fast. If you see me keep looking over to the side, it's because during this whole process, it took a while. So I was watching probably something like Friends or The Office or Parks and Rec or Brooklyn Nine-Nine, some kind of sitcom to keep me going through all of this. Now that I have the skeletons of the cabinet together, I am installing my grow lights. So for this cabinet, I am using the Barina T5 grow lights. Uh, you can find these on Amazon or pretty much anywhere uh, in Canada. They're very easy to get a hold of. And I have both the two foot and the one foot grow lights. I had the one foot previously, but I also bought some two foot uh, grow lights for this project. I have a combination of the yellowish light and the pinkish white grow, grow lights. The pinkish white grow lights are better for full spectrum plant growth. They have more blue wavelength and the yellow ones have more red wavelength. So they're better for blooming. But I honestly find that if, especially if you're like me and you love Hoyas, you're gonna want the pinkish white if you want to sun stress your plants, which I do for certain ones of my Hoya. I'm installing each of them just using uh, zip ties on the grow lights and then using magnetic hooks that I bought from Amazon again and just attaching them to the top of my cabinets. For ones that I want to put lower in the cabinet and attach to a shelf, I'm just using the double-sided tape that came with the grow lights. Now finally, after getting the grow lights in, setting up my shelves, putting in some magnetic shelves, it's time to fill the cabinet with plants. I rearrange my plants quite a bit during this process and I'm continuing to. I think it's half the fun of having a greenhouse cabinet. Um, but what you wanna do is you want to make sure you're looking at the PPFD of your grow lights and looking at the strength of light and the kind of plants you have and placing the plants that require more light at the top of the cabinet. So you'll see, um, as I'm placing them in, I'm putting my taller plants kind of lower down with larger leaves. I'm putting my plants, uh, my Hoya especially, that require 
or that can be sun stressed right near the top. And then I'm putting uh, plants and Hoya that don't necessarily like to be sun stressed lower to the bottom. So this would include my Hoya linearis, some Hoya weedii, and other plants as well. Hi everyone! Okay, this update was supposed to only be a few weeks, a month later, and it is now several months later, so I'm excited to give you a more comprehensive overview of how things are going with my greenhouse cabinet and what changes I have made to this little nook in general over the past few months. It was delayed in part because it took a long time to get some of these parts in the supply chain issues during COVID, and as you can see, I have a beautiful new shelf. Isn't it stunning? This was actually a Christmas present from my husband. So I really wanted to show you how I've styled this area, what my plans in the future are, how plants in my greenhouse cabinet are doing, and what changes I've made in terms of light, how humidity is doing, weather stripping, etc. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first up, this new shelf here. So at the top, I have some Hoyas. Um, I actually put in, so these are all Purina T5 grow lights, except I added in right at the top here. This is a Monios, uh, I think that's how you say it, T5. It's much stronger than the Barina. And the reason it's there is because I wanted to sun stress my Hoya Sunrise, and also I had a cacti back there. And it is working amazing. It is just the perfect light source for those kind of plants. Further down, I have some more Hoya, some more Barina T5s right in here, which are doing amazing. My plant growth has just shot up. It has been fantastic. Further down, I have some plant supplies, which I do need to organize a bit more, but this is more of my pest control, my fertilizer, all in an easy to grab space. And then further down, I have books, uh, some things I need to tidy up, but all of my books and storage are towards the bottom. This has worked out really well for me. It keeps my plants up high away from my cats, uh, but also gives me a nice space for my books and other uh, plant related storage. So I really love how this has turned out. Over to the side here, I have turned these um, grow lights off. These are just ones you can get on Amazon. They're very strong, I really like them. Uh, but for this video, I've turned them off and I have my cute little all you need is love and a cat sign. And then I have some anthurium and alocasia on top of this cabinet. I am planning on making this really just alocasia and moving my anthurium over to this shelf, but we will see how it goes. I also bought an upgraded humidifier. The uh, humidity meter on it is not accurate. I read all the reviews. I knew that was the case. This is the Levoit, um six liter humidifier. Uh, it works really well in here during the winter. I just have it running consistently on a low level because as I said, the uh, humidity uh, reader isn't accurate. And below it, I'm sure what you're all waiting to hear more about is the greenhouse cabinet. So this has worked so well, attaching all of these bag of bow cabinets together, these three. I have considered moving one away and having kind of a two and one, but I think the three really works well together. I think it has the right amount of space and it looks really beautiful. So let's take a look inside. First thing, I originally had two of these smaller, I think these are 80 millimeter um, AC infinity fans. So I have one there and one at the bottom here. Those are working fine, but I also got a 120 millimeter fan. I don't think this is necessary, but I was a little worried about any potential fungal problems. I just really wanted to be as sure as I could that everything was going to be safe and healthy in here. So those three fans are working great. I might move it back down to two. Haven't decided yet, but for now, 
it's been a great uh, setup for me. At the top, you can see I have a two foot Barina grow light connected to a one foot and then the same behind. So in total, there's three feet of Barina grow lights, two sets of three feet. Uh, these have been working really well for my plants. I did have more, but I actually recently removed a set because I found this was more than enough, even for my Hoya growth. Further down here, I have another T5 one foot Barina grow light just for these plants at the bottom. And in this cabinet, I have two more one foot Barina grow lights, uh, one foot T5s. And that is just for any of my other plants at the bottom. This has worked amazing for my Hoyas to bloom. I have had so many blooms in here. And if we actually look on my Hora, Hora, if we actually look on my Hoya Mirabilis, you can see we have a, quite a few peduncles on there waiting to bloom. So I'm very excited about that. Let's open her up. So I have kept my Hoyas that like more light and are happy to be sun stressed towards the top. So for example, my Hoya Elliptica is turning this beautiful little pink color when it gets close to the grow lights. And that's been working out well. And then towards the bottom here, I have more of my aeroids. So I have my Rehab Thai Constellation, I have an Inferium papillolaminum, papillolaminum, and um, propagations, three propagations. This cabinet has really shocked me with how much I have used it for my propagations. It has been amazing. So I recommend if you're thinking of getting a greenhouse cabinet, reserve one corner for your props because they do well in here. Moving to the middle cabinet, I have a mixed pot of Hoya Weyetii, um, the inner variegated and the non-variegated form. And as you can see, the inner variegated goes such a beautiful pink in here. It really loves it. Further down, I have some Hoyas that don't need as much light. They were originally higher up in the cabinet, but I could tell their growth was actually stunted by how much light they were getting. So I've moved them down and I'm monitoring them. And then same thing at the bottom here. These are my Hoyas that don't need as much light. You're gonna have to rearrange it a few times, I have found, to really find what makes your individual plants happy. As you can see, I've also added beautiful stickers to the back of my cabinet. I find that it fills in the space really well. Um, I like that it gives kind of an, it fills in that empty space without you needing to stuff it so full of plants that you don't know what to do. Those I got on Amazon, they're peel and stick reusable uh, plant stickers and I love them. Finally, in my third cabinet here, I have some of my larger Hoyas because I removed the shelf at the top here so they have more room to grow. So for example, my Hoya Chicken Farm, my uh, Glabra, um, I also have a sweet scent in there. So all of these plants that are gonna grow quite big are in the corner here. And then towards the bottom, I have more Hoya that um, need bright light but don't need to be quite near, don't need to be sun stressed. This side here is the only side that I have put foam weather stripping on. That is because it's where the fans are and I found that without that foam weather stripping, the humidity just wasn't staying where I liked it. You can also see at the top here, I put in some, well, throughout the side and then across the top, I put in some cable management solutions and then all of my cables actually just come out the front. I did not drill any hole in this. So when I close it, it actually closes with all of these cords at the top here. It works fine. I've had no problems with that. And it means I don't have to use a drill and it means I can rearrange this cabinet in the future. So because I've had the door open, you can see right now the humidity is only at like 60% and 24.5 degrees Celsius. Um, generally, actually where this is sitting when I don't have the doors open is 75 to 80% humidity. 
and about 26, 27 degrees during the day and 24 degrees at night, which is again, perfect for my Hoyas. So as you saw in the video, uh, or I tried to show, I know my back was to the camera a lot. I, the only other placing places I have weather stripping are in between the cabinets themselves. I have used clear weather stripping tape just to seal those cabinets a bit. And then for every single door on the inside hinge, I have some V-shaped weather, weather stripping which you saw me apply in the video. And that keeps my humidity where I want it. I did not have to do a full weather strip. I don't think you need to. I would honestly recommend doing a little bit at first and then adding where you need it. Because overall, I think it's just, unless you live in an extremely dry area, and I mean, my apartment is very dry, I don't think you need it. So there you have it. This is my beautiful little reading nook corner. And I absolutely love it. I'm sure I'm going to be rearranging it more in the future and adding and removing more plants. But uh, I hope that it maybe inspired you to create something uh, different and find a cute little way to display your plants because I really love this. This has been just wonderful for my apartment. So thank you all for watching, uh, especially if you made it this far. Uh, I know this hasn't been the highest quality video. This has been one of the first videos I've ever made. but. Thank you very much for joining me. And please give this uh, video a like if you found it helpful. You can also subscribe to my channel. I will be posting videos weekly and you can follow me on Instagram at smallcityplants. See you next time. Bye.